What's good, my people? Welcome to the film room. Myself, Mo Mutsu, alongside three-time NBA champion, the point guard guru, Mr. <laughs> BJ Armstrong, your favorite podcast duo. But today, we're doing something different. We're breaking down some film. We're gonna look at Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors, how they've been so effective in the different defenses that Celtics have tried to throw at them. So BJ, let's dive straight into the film. One great thing about the Celtics team is their ability to switch one through four. You can see here Marcus Smart is guarding Steph Curry. Derek White switches straight onto him and forces Steph Curry into a tough look. That's their strong point. So what the Golden State Warriors have tried to do is they've tried to hunt out Al Horford. So they try and put him in all the pick and roll matchups. As you can see here, what Al Horford does is a great job of getting up above the three point line. So what he can do is contain Steph Curry until Jason Tatum can recover, trail him, force him into a contested shot and a miss. But then what the danger is, is when Al Horford sinks low, look right here, he's on the free throw line. Steph Curry's got acres of space to shoot the ball. You know what's gonna happen if Steph Curry's shooting the ball? He knocks it down. So then a lot of people have said, well, why aren't the Celtics trapping Steph Curry? As you can see here, they throw two defenders at him. Well, the reason is, that opens up the short roll game for Draymond Green to be effective making plays, assisting his teammates. So my question to you is, as the point guard guru, if you were Stephen Curry, what's the hardest defense you have to face and what should the Celtics look to do in order to try and limit that man? Well, you know, this is, you know, we've watched the games and now we've seen the games. And as I'm watching the tape, you know, I'm saying to myself as a ex-player, just if I'm looking at it from a player's perspective is, there's only one player here who is attacking the dribble, okay? When you play basketball, it's all about flow and it's all about rhythm. Marcus Martin is the only player, and I don't know the stats, but I'm, I would, I'm willing to bet that when Marcus Marks guards Stephen Curry, his statistics and the way he shoots is probably significantly lower than when Marcus Martin is not guarding him. Why? Because as a guard, the one thing we don't like is when people attack our dribble, when people attack your rhythm. And the one thing about Al Horford is it's, he's playing with a cardinal sin. If you can stop the tape, he's always playing defense with his hands to the side. <laughs> okay, so we can see it right here. As yeah, Steph Curry he, comes off, his hands he, are down. Yeah, yeah, so he needs to have his hands up then. No, he's, he's got to attack the dribble. Okay. okay, so when you're coming off, when you're practicing, you go one, two, shot, one, two, three, shot, one, two. And then if I jab at you or poke at the ball, now it throws off your rhythm. Okay, so if you ever watch Marcus Smart play, I, I don't want to give away the secrets because I'm not, I, I'm, I don't care which team here is. To give the but away. here's the here's the secret to playing defense when you want to disrupt someone. As a defensive player, the one thing I always try to do is when the ball goes down to the ground, it's a free ball. Yeah. All right. So when the ball is in his hand, now he can cross over, he can hesitate, he can do things. But when the ball goes down the ball is down now it's actual it's a free ball so you could see Al every single time if you watch Al plays he's just containing yeah that's nothing see this play like here he's trying to hold up Steph yeah wait hey, for Tatum hey, to hey, recover yeah that's that's nothing this is this is nothing what you want to do is you want to disrupt okay how do you disrupt okay I, I, I don't want if someone is attacking your dribble that's the hardest thing to play against but then Al Horford is a lot slower than Steph Curry, so if he's trying it to doesn't, it doesn't matter. Steph's dribble, what's stopping Steph the, from going the, Okay, but he's got a dribble. He's got to take an extra dribble. That extra dribble is the one that's going to throw off your rhythm. So it's like playing against a team is, if you know they want to pass over there, if I can just disrupt the pass, that's a win for me. You're not going to stop Steph Curry, so let's get that out of so the way. So if, you, if you're the Celtics, would you want Al Horford switching then and trying to attack his dribble, or would you be trying to throw two no, defenders? Just, what just, are you trying to do? What's the coverage you're looking at? Okay, you're active with your feet. You First, you get in the defensive position, which Al is clearly doing. You move your feet. He's, he's good enough to move his feet. I'm not asking him to stop Steph Curry. All I'm asking him to do is don't get what's called a direct line to the basket. Okay, a direct line back to the basket would mean, he just, I just don't want him to go straight to the basket. If you make him go this way, that gives me time to recover and get help. They are a great help defensive team. The one thing I would ask Al to do is to attack his handle. Just, 
it's, it's, if, if I see a big who plays like this, okay, because us guards, we study body language, okay, this means nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see someone playing like this, okay, secret. Oh, wow, this is beautiful. If I see someone who's constantly digging at the ball, digging at the ball, okay, Marcus Smart, Draymond Green, they're constantly digging at the ball, then that's a problem for me. That's a problem for any guard. So you want to see Al Horford be more aggressive when he has to guard Steph Curry? I want to see Al Horford utilize his hands. Okay. Okay, that's a part of the game. You know, you, you, you play the game with your feet, you play the game with your body, and you also play the game with your hands. Al, Hor Al Horford is what we would consider, he's a contained defender. He just contains the ball. You know, he just, he's like a, he's like a, uh, a defensive player who he plays the right position, but he doesn't disrupt the play. Okay. I want him to disrupt the play. So how do you disrupt the play? You're, you're, you're using your hands, you can block a shot, you, you, you know, you will bump, get back. You're constantly showing different looks to the offensive player so that they have to adjust too. You know, if you hit somebody, Mo, and then you back away, you have to absorb that hit. If I poke the ball away, you gotta do something. Yeah. You, you either got to protect the ball or do a double bounce or something that's going to disrupt, which will allow the other player who is supposed to come around. But if he just come around and he's just standing like this, he can do the snake dribble. He can do the step back. It's too hard to do something. So attack the dribble. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, once he attacks the dribble, suddenly Steph Curry's got to do something. Okay. He's, he's so got to see a more aggressive Al Horford. When he, that he, I don't want to see if he's too aggressive. He will get a direct line. It's called a direct line of. He will get yeah, a direct line. A direct line so if he comes out too fast, he'll split it. If he comes out too slow, he'll shoot it. He has to play and say, "I'm." And Steph Curry comes out. Steph Curry's got to be. Steph Curry's got to go. I got to protect the ball. Okay. Okay, if, 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 you're too, if you're overly aggressive, Steph Curry will win that match 10 out of 10 times. Okay. If he's not aggressive, he will win and you'll, he'll have so another 40 points. in other words, point. you can't be too aggressive, you can't drop too low, you have to be perfect. No, and that's the no, only way. no. This, it's a reason why there are good defensive teams and there's not. The reason the Celtics are a good defensive team is because they have a guy who erases their mistakes. His name is Rob Williams. Someone beats the Celtics to the basket and Rob Williams makes a spectacular block and you go, oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. But they're playing lineups with just him or Al. They're okay. playing one big lineup now. Al Horford, if you're going to win this series, you better attack his dribble. Okay. <laughs> so you heard it here first. You know, <laughs> you, we hope you, the Celtics are listening. If you want to win this game, if you want to win this series, you're going, to, you're going to have to not contain him. You're not going to contain him. This young man, Steph Curry, we should just call him, I'm calling him Mr. Wardell Curry. That's, that's Mr. Curry. Mr. Curry is going to score 30 plus points. What you don't want Mr. Curry to do is once he starts getting to 40 points and shooting 50% from three, you have a major problem. Big time. So, okay, you, you, have a major, you have a major problem. So now what he has to do is he has to be respectful to the game. No guard, no guard in the history of this game wants a big who is going to disrupt his flow coming off a screen roll. That's a fact. Okay. Well, you heard it here first. I hope Al Horford is listening to this show and we'll see if the Celtics can stay aggressive on their defense, but not too aggressive, like BJ said. Well, I think that's the wrong word. Aggressive is the, aggressive is the wrong word. Disruptive. You got to be disruptive. There disruptive. So that is according to BJ Armstrong, the point guard guru, what he would want to see the Celtics doing to disrupt the game of Mr. Stephen Curry, who had a monster game four and the Warriors are back home now for game five. So let's see if they can close this one out and secure a win at home and take a 3-2 lead in the NBA Finals. Mm -hmm.